afternoon, class of 2018. It is my honor as the representative of this college's wonderful faculty and staff to welcome you today. I've already had a chance to begin learning about your amazing backgrounds. And once again, I am reminded about why I didn't get into Harvard College when I was in high school. Put it this way, it's easier to become dean than it is to get into the college. <laughs> and by the way, we're totally over the rejection. I'm fine, really, I'm in a good place now, so uh, I'm okay. So, that said, I know that no matter where you came from or how you traveled, it was not easy to get here. It's clear that all of you put a lot of hard work into arriving into this place and you should be really proud of that work and those achievements. And at the same time, as my oldest daughter enters her senior year in high school, I am concerned about how intense the college admissions process has become. It's like the Hunger Games. <laughs> the process can easily condition someone to think about education as a zero-sum game, or only about getting high grades, or presenting oneself as having everything figured out by 17. I'm 46 now, and I still think medical school might be my next possible step if this whole dean thing doesn't work out. <laughs> but now that you're here, you may feel that you're expected to do high school all over again, to jump through a series of hoops and prove yourself. And one of the most important things that I want to tell you today is that you don't. You were already admitted to Harvard. You all belong here. And what we hope for you is a very different type of experience. In the months since knowing I would become dean, I've had lots of conversations with students, faculty, and staff. And I've asked them a couple of questions. What is the fundamental character of the Harvard College experience? What do you hope will be the essence of the college experience? And what are the parts of the experience that if you could go back in time, you would spend more time on? And after numerous discussions with community members, I found that the word that best epitomizes the experience is transformation. So what do I mean by transformation? Let me explain by drawing on a contrast between two possible ways that you could approach your time here. Your four years here can be transactional or they can be transformational. And here's what a transactional experience would look like. You take your classes on the basis what others are taking. You pick them with your GPA in mind. You're reenacting the script that in many cases has worked for you up to this point, that got you here. And in this script, you're starting Harvard with an incredible amount of certainty about what you will do here and what you will do with your life, with no possibility for deviation. There are benefits that will be familiar to you from this approach. You may get an A, you may feel comfortable, and you may get material results. On the other hand, a transformational college experience might look like this. It's rooted in the ideal of intellectual exploration, in the pursuit of connecting with people who are different from you and learning from them, and in the process of reflecting on what you've learned and deciding what kind of person you want to be. What does an intellectual experience look like at the college? Instead of focusing on material goals, med school, Wall Street, business school, Kennedy school, you focus on the path. You take the courses that are difficult if they interest you, not just courses you think you should take. You read and question even if those pursuits take you down a slightly different path. You join organizations that spark in you a sense of meaning and purpose not just comping and winning. You find new comfort outside of what has, in the past, felt safe. What does social transformation look like? Instead of gravitating to people you knew in high school, you actively seek connections with people who are different from you. Instead of networking with people, you're interested in knowing them. You embrace differences in values, differences in outlook, differences in life stories. And when you pursue these connections, you will come to realize that every single person's story is valid, that you can connect with people in ways that you never imagined. This willingness to connect with other people different from you will serve you well not only in the college, but as you prepare to enter into our global society. 
What does a personal transformation mean? This requires reflection. It means knitting a story about your life that will help you answer at least three of these questions. Who am I? How do others experience me? And how can I best use my talents and gifts? Today, I want to encourage you to recognize that this transformational path, while more difficult, is more rewarding. Change is never easy. It's easy for me to say these words, but it's always often more comfortable to take the familiar path. I want to try something. I've never tried it with a book group this big. I usually do this with like 30 students in my class. Clasp your hands together. Okay, keep your hands together. Everybody who has their left thumb over their right thumb, put your hands up. Okay, I'm assuming the other 50% are going the other way. Okay, reweave in the opposite way. How's that feel? Weird, strange, right? This is a very simple change, people. This is not about maximizing learning instead of GPA. This is not about connecting with people who remind you with just of who your favorite person is yourself, but rather with people who challenge your values, your perspectives. This is not about confusing busyness with reflection. You see, if you see Harvard as another four years of building your resume while your life is on hold, you're gonna miss out on what's the best that this institution can offer and the best of what you can contribute. College is not a stop on the way to the rest of your life. This is your life. And these four years of college are where the patterns for your lives will be set. If you spend these years taking no chances, reinforcing your beliefs, deferring any reflection on who you are and what you want, I promise you, you will be doing the same thing in 20 years. But if you open yourself up to this community and what it has to offer, if you question you ask yourself what you believe and who you want to be, then you will begin to see and value yourself in new ways as you evolve into the person you will become. And those who take this harder route will have taken the first step of fulfilling the college's mission of educating citizens and citizen leaders for our society. They will be well prepared to answer the call of a larger world that is in need of citizens and leaders who are not afraid to challenge the status quo or take risks. The test of leadership is taking a stand based on what you think is right, even if success is not assured. We're going to tackle our most important problems in society. Poverty, environmental degradation, justice, health. A more transactional approach to the world is not going to get us there. Now, the question is, how do you have a transformational experience? especially when it feels like you're the vessel of so many people's expectations. As a child of immigrants who grew up thinking there were four professions, doctor, engineer, accountant, and loser, <laughs> as someone who was a product of a regular public school system in New York, a transfer student to Cornell, as a person who's felt the pressure of other people's expectations in my own, I know there were real tensions. You will wonder whether you belong here, where your talents truly lie, whether you can push on. These are normal feelings. At least I hope they are because I'm having them right now. You are all different, but the one thing we noticed about you is that you all feel like you're being called into something bigger. And how that's going to manifest in your life, determine a career, we have no idea. But I know this, we as a community can work together to create conditions for each other so that each individual here can hear that call become clearer and louder. Each of us has the ability to complete our own creations, to define who authentically we are by the ways we choose to live our lives, and to finally create the conditions so others may do the same. As a new dean, really a freshman dean myself, I share in your awe and excitement and nervousness. We will be on this journey together for the next four years. We will learn together, laugh together, worry together, and help each other up when we stumble and make mistakes. I want us to get together at the end of this first year and talk about what we've learned about ourselves, our work, our ideas, and what's happened to us, and how we can work together to create the kind of community at Harvard that we would like to see in the world. Thank you.